Hey everybody, welcome to our series on mentorship. This is part one. I'm excited this week to talk about Moses and Joshua. You know, the Bible is full of these mentor-mentee relationships. Moses and Joshua is one of the best ones. Certainly Jesus and his disciples is fantastic. Elijah and Elisha is an interesting one. But Moses and Joshua, we can learn a lot from. And, and you know what is so powerful that I've learned just in preparing for this series is that mentorship, as we could probably all guess, is not just about, it's not just a business relationship. It's not just about, it's not a technical thing only that we can teach to other people or something like that. It is deeply spiritual and deeply needed. And it is it is part of the economy and the culture that God has set up and called us to, for there to be mentors and mentees, for there to be fathers and sons, mothers and daughters. And I mean spiritually, and you know, not just literally. And so this, this is a, a key thing. When we're called to go out and make disciples, we're called to go out and mentor, right? But it is... Um, it is something that I think a lot of people know how to do, and I am definitely not claiming to know how to do it, but I think it's something that has not been explored enough in the spiritual aspect, in a, in a very deep sense, as much as it's been explored in a very technical, you know, here's how to live your life and do life and mentor others kind of aspect. So I'm excited to get into it. We're going to start with Exodus chapter 24. So it's Exodus chapter 24 today. This is one of my favorite chapters in the Bible because it talks about Moses taking a group of people from, from the people of Israel while they're out in the wilderness up Mount Sinai. And he actually, Moses actually takes 73, 74 people, elders plus a few others, so all elders from Israel, up to see God face to face. So Moses is a mentor to them, shared that experience that he had every day with them on this, this one time to see God face to face. And in Exodus 24, verse 11, it says, and though these nobles of Israel gazed upon God, he did not destroy them. In fact, and the in fact is there to say, it's not just that they saw God face to face. They ate a covenant meal, eating and drinking in his presence. Whoa. I mean, Moses took them up into this most um, intimate of relationships, right, with God uh, that he experienced on a day-to-day -day basis. But then here's the bigger thing. Moses leaves these elders, most of which are, I'm sure, older than Joshua at this point. Joshua's a, a younger man. Um, Moses leaves the elders behind, but it says in verse 13, Moses and his assistant, Joshua, set out and and they climbed up the mountain of God. Now, it starts saying that just Moses did all these things, but we know that he took Joshua with him. And then when you get to verse 16, it says, uh, once they get to the top of the mountain, the glory of the Lord settled down on Mount Sinai and the cloud covered it for six days. On the seventh day, the Lord called to Moses from inside the cloud. To the Israelites at the foot of the mountain, the glory of the Lord appeared at the summit like a consuming fire. And when we had a consuming fire before, Moses in the burning bush, right? Then Moses disappeared into the cloud as he climbed higher up the mountain. He remained on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. But, but we know that Joshua did too. In fact, we know that later it says that Joshua came back down with him. So Joshua was up there the entire time. Here is what I want to talk about today as it, as it comes, as it refers to mentoring. And this is really powerful for me. I hadn't seen this before. To mentor, we've, we've got to be willing to fail in front of our mentees. We've got to be transparent. We've got to invite them to a place uh, that we might even fear. We've got to invite them to a place that will be risky for us as mentors where we could fail so that they can see, for a number of reasons, so that they can see that we're real, so that we can say, see that we're not perfect, so they can see they don't have to be perfect, so they, they can see that... Um, that it's okay to fail. That it's certainly okay to be transparent. Uh, they've got to see the real us in order for them to ever be the real them. Otherwise, and this is a huge key, they're only going to learn what to do and not who to be. They're only going to learn what to do and not who to be if we don't if we don't allow them to see not just who, not only what we do but who we are. They've got to see who we are, good, bad, and the ugly. So the last time Moses met with God. You know, when there was like a consuming fire, right? Because the Israelites saw a consuming fire that he disappeared into with Joshua on that mountain was way back when Moses talked to God in the burning bush. And if you flip back and you read that, that uh, story, 
what you will remember by reading that story is that Moses responded in that moment when God talked to him from the burning bush and told him what to do. And he's about, God's about to talk to him on this mountain and tell him what to do as well. But that time when he talked to Moses and told him what to do, Moses failed. What I mean by Moses failed is obviously he went out and eventually did it. But Moses initially respond, <clears throat> excuse me, Moses initially responded in fear. Moses responded out of his insecurity. Moses said, God, I, you're picking me? I, I can't talk. I can't speak clearly. I'm, I'm, not, the, I'm not your man. You know, I, pick somebody else, please. I can't do this. Now imagine the, the next time Moses goes and meets God in a, in a burning fire, he takes the guy who's been looking up to him his entire journey, his mentee with him, and Moses doesn't know what God's going to call him to do. Moses doesn't know what, he's, what, Mo, what God's going to say to him. And frankly, Moses doesn't know for sure how Moses is going to respond. Moses took a risk in allowing Joshua into the transparency, into the intimacy, in, into the risk, into the, into the place where he, Joshua might see Moses' insecurity. And it's so key as mentors. And I'm not saying get irresponsible with this. I'm not saying, hey, my mentee, I want to sit down with you. I want to tell you every wrong thing I've ever done in my life. You know, I just want to be an open book. You know, I screwed up here. I screwed up there. I screw up every day. I, you know, I'm horrible. That's not, that's not the point. That's not what Moses did. Moses didn't sit down with him. Moses took him into the inner circle. Moses took him into the presence of God. Moses took him into that place of intimate meeting with God. And the point is when we come into intimate meeting with God, our hearts are revealed, right? And our fears and our faith is revealed. And Moses knew that. And we, and with our mentees, I'm not talking about sitting down and telling them a laundry list of everything we've ever done. I'm talking about saying to them, you know, come with me as I go. And God has called me to go to this place and, and preach. But I, you know, frankly, I've never done this before. And it's scary, but I want you to come. I want you to be a part of it. Frankly, you know, God has called me to pray for healing for somebody. And I've never really done that before with a lot of faith, but I want you to come, mentee, and, and do this with me. Um, God has called me to, you know, just speak in front of a crowd, you know, a small crowd, and I've never done it before. Whatever it might be, come, you know, can we just pray together? Some of us are just scared to pray out loud with others, but hey, mentee, you know, I want us to start praying out loud together. You know, I, I'll pray, then you pray. And for some of us, that's scary and that's risky. We're not, we're not sure how we're going to do, if we're going to do a good enough job, but we've Got to let the mentees in to the journey, to the intimacy, to the relationship with God that we have and the things that he calls us to, especially the things that are risky and scary, so that they can see that it's okay to step into the risky and scary. It's okay to be transparent. It's okay to show their mentees because you're their, their mentor, but they've got mentees. And, and you want to show them and say to them, it's okay to show your mentees that you don't have everything, all your ducks in a row and everything is perfect. And this is true, not just in spiritually, but in, in business and in life. You know, in business, a lot of times you want to show your employee that you're perfect, but that's not inspiring them or teaching them the right way to lead. Instead, I'm not saying tell them everything you messed up on, but it's to take them into risky situations, times when you invite them and say, hey, I'm not sure if this is going to work, but I'm going to lead us in this way. Or I've never spoken in front of this group before, but I want you to come with me, you know, or whatever it might be. So we've got to take them into the inner circle, into the place of intimacy, into the place of risk, and the place of transparency as we go out and do things so that they can see um, all these all these positive things that come from being real and being who you are so that they can know it's a lot more important to be who you are than the things that you do. Otherwise, you're just showing them and telling them things to do. You're just giving them a how-to manual, which is not inspiring, is not going to help them change lives. You've got to show them not just what you do, but who you are. And that's what we've got to do as mentors. And that's what Moses knew to do with Joshua. And I, and I know that Joshua up there in that burning fire, seeing all this, probably his knees and legs trembling and shaking, had to say to himself, wow, this is what it takes to lead the people of Israel. And that's what we want to do for our mentees. All right, see you, see you again in part two.